got this boy on my mind that I can't live without Oh, his eyes are killing me And he keeps talking about everything that he likes And I can't stop listening I'm thinking about him all the time I'm thinking about him all the time I'm thinking about him all the time All the time And my heart's been fast when it's looking like that Oh, his smile is killing me It's the way that it moves and the way that it laughs So I can't get enough Think about him all the time I can get him off my mind Oh, I want him to be mine, to be mine My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him now, 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 now My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah I told him I can be a fighter So today is the long awaited, most requested video of my weight loss journey. I'm gonna call it a weight loss journey, but kind of my health journey. If you're interested to hear all about my journey and what I've been doing, I'm gonna pop in some before and afters and also try and keep it as concise and informative as possible. But if you're interested to hear about it all, then continue. To watch. So hi guys, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Juliet and I do new videos on this channel every week. I do lots of beauty, fashion, lifestyle, hauls, that kind of thing. And if you're one of my lovely subscribers, thank you so much for coming back. Your support means the world to me and this is a video that you've all been asking me for. So here I am. So I have made so many notes for this video um, to what to talk to you about. First of all, Everybody is different, every journey is different, and this is my journey. I am not a qualified PT, I am not a qualified nutritionalist, I am not a doctor, I am not a nurse, I am just a 35 year old mum of two that was in a really bad place, more mentally than physically, um, and then this is my story. What I wanna say is, it's been a very emotional journey for me and it's something that I've been really skeptical about putting on the internet because it's something that I'm very emotional about and um, it's really quite a sensitive subject for me and um, so there is trigger warning there will be talks of binge eating disorder um, body dysmorphia depression that kind of thing so there are going to be a lot of triggering elements so if that is something that you are uncomfortable with watching i'm telling you now that's what it's going to be in this video but what i want to say is there is nothing unfortunately that is going to be some kind of magic remedy science doesn't lie and i know that a lot of people will find it harder than others like i say every journey is different if you're somebody who's like maybe on medication that causes weight gain if you've got an underlying medical condition that causes weight gain or makes it difficult to lose weight if you've got a disability that makes it hard to exercise or move more then yeah your journey will be different this is mine this is personal and raw and i just hope it helps somebody out there that is feeling maybe like I was. So let me start with my personal past experiences with eating. I've yo-yo dieted my whole life. I grew up in a very diet culture. I think that's something that really I struggled with. I lost a lot of weight, I gained a lot of weight. I think my heaviest, I was a size 20. I've been as low as a size eight. I've yo-yo dieted my whole life. But then it got to the point where I was secret eating. And then now we're kind of in this era where body positivity has kind of taken the forefront where you've got to love the body you're in you you know your all this self-love when you're when you have a problem with the way you look and like body dysmorphia it's really hard to just love the body you're in because it doesn't actually matter what size you are it's a mental thing so 
that is one problem that I have had to deal with and also the binge eating was a big thing for me I didn't realize it was such a problem until I realized I was like hiding packets of things I was only eating when Matt was out the house I would starve myself and then I would eat loads on an evening and there was just like this constant cycle and so I knew that my health my relationship with food was unhealthy as well so that was something I really needed to focus on moving forward. Biggest thing for me is what I'm going to start with is what is your why? So James Smith, actually, he's like a, an influencer that talks a lot about like cutting all the crap out and talking about diet and exercise and stuff. And he calls them pain points. So it's not just like, oh, I want to lose weight or, oh, I want to be healthier or, you know, those kind of um, whys. It's more like an emotional why like I don't want my children to be embarrassed of me I don't want to be worried about getting older and and like them having to look after me because I've neglected my body and then I'm a 50 60 year old woman that needs them because I haven't looked after myself properly like I want to see them grow up I want to see my grandkids grow up like I think of that more now that is my why I want to be the healthiest best version of myself for my children for my grandchildren I don't want them to be worried about my health and worried about what's going to happen to me in 20 years time like that is my responsibility now to look after myself and to look after my health it's not so much about how I look it's more about my insides and yeah that is my why. So the first thing I think anybody needs to do is look at what changes you need to make. So like I've said, my biggest problems were my relationship with food, um, the fact that I would just go on this yo-yo cycle where I would do a burst and I would go to the gym like every day for a month and then I would just fall off the wagon. It was just very much like all or nothing with me. That was just like my pattern, that was just my personality, that was just what I was like, I was like all or nothing. And it was because my why wasn't important enough. I was always doing it for a number on the scale, I was always doing it to look better. And whilst that is like something that's come from me, it wasn't, it wasn't as important enough to drive this change. So my biggest thing first was to break my cycle with emotional eating. And it was just the fact that I, I was an emotional eater. I was happy, I would eat, sad, I would eat. I would always wake up and think, what, what meal am I gonna have next? Like, that was just me. That was the way I thought of food. I didn't think of it in any other way. It was a dopamine hit, it was a coping mechanism. It was just something, it was like a drug to me. Like food was like a drug to me. That's, that's how I can explain it. So the first thing I need to do is to break that cycle. Now, again, this is something that I started with, which you shouldn't ever do without doctors, without like seeking advice of your doctor first. It was something that Matt was even a little skeptical about, and it was because I'd done so much research on this topic, and that was water fasting. Now, the reason I did this, and it was a bit of a big thing to do, it was a big thing to start on um, because I actually did a three day water fast. So I did three days without any food whatsoever. I took electrolyte, um, no calorie, zero calorie electrolyte tablets from Amazon, which I can leave link below. And I did a three day water fast to kickstart this. And the reason behind this was again, not weight loss goals. It was because I wanted to break that relationship with food. And so I wanted to focus on feeling how I felt with hunger and how I felt and how that felt versus emotional hunger if that makes sense so I would eat even when I wasn't hungry it would be to fill an emotional void so I thought by doing this fast it would be a really good way of differentiating those feelings and I actually was really surprised I also thought it'd be a really good way of testing my um, willpower because I always feel like I always used to feel like I failed at everything and so I wanted to test my willpower as well and so that was a really big starting point for me and um, what I found was for the first two days I wasn't actually even hungry when I really put down to it and thought I'm not gonna have food I've only got water I was really surprised with how long I actually went without feeling physical hunger at all and um, which just goes to show how much I was eating out of emotional hunger does that make sense? So this fast kick-started what I feel, it broke that cycle with my emotional eating. And not everybody needs to do that. Not everybody has the same kind of journey. Like 
the same kind of problems that I do, but for me, that's how I was treating my emotional connection to food. The next thing that I did was completely look at things in a different way altogether. So the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And so I knew that when I was focused on weight goals, it wouldn't work because weight fluctuates so much on the scale. There are so many things, especially as a woman, that will dictate the weight on a scale. And so whilst I wanted to lose weight on the scale, I also changed my goals so that they were completely different. I wanted to find something that I loved and stick at it and find a new hobby. I wanted to create exercise PBs. So focus on like weight PBs in the gym, how much I could deadlift, can I do a pull up, just completely different goals like that and then also I had a pair of jeans that I wanted to get into because again weight might not change that much but your body composition may change especially if you do not like resistance training like weights so those were like my goals there let's get into it now a bit deeper so food I have been eating a calorie deficit what that means is everybody has a BMR, a basic metabolic rate, which means if you didn't do anything at all, all day, you would have a number that you'd be able to figure out. I will leave the link below to the BMR calculator that Matt uses and that he used for me. So you put your age, your weight, your height in there, and it will tell you how many calories you need a day to survive, regardless of what you do. Now, a big, big, big mistake that people make is that um, figure then has got like a little graph underneath and you can then see, okay, well, if you're very sedentary, this is how many calories you have. If you, you know, do reasonable amount of exercise, you need this many calories. If you work out a lot, you need this many calories. Do not ever go by those numbers because that is just down to individual interpretation and opinion because what one person might think, oh, well, actually, I do quite a lot for a living. I'm on my feet all day. Um, you know, I do 10,000 steps a day. They may think they're actually really active when, in fact, that's not that active at all. To somebody who used to work out in the gym five times a week, now they only do three workouts a week on top of everything else. So they would say, oh, well, actually, I, I don't really work out that much. It's all down to interpretation. So what I would say, in my opinion, would be go to your BMR. Just look at that, that number is at the top, that is how many calories you need a day to survive, and then you can work everything else around that. I say this with so much love, that people may think calorie counting is um, unhealthy, um, because it can get obsessive, and I completely understand where you're coming from, but I think knowledge is power. I think people, may think it's unhealthy but they underestimate the power of just the basic science of things you need to be in a deficit of three and a half thousand calories to burn one pound of fat just think about that for a second three and a half thousand calories that is a lot of a calorie deficit for one pound say you were working say to a week um and so it's so easy to slip here and there and this is why it's really important to know what is in the food that you are eating. For example, I was drinking a lot of liquid calories. I was drinking a lot of wine. That is really high in calories. And then people would say, oh, okay, well, I've switched my wine to gin. If you went out and had five double gins, that's a thousand calories. Just like that. Me and Matt were talking about it the other day that I was going to cook a carrot cake because I really want to do a video on doing a carrot cake because it's all autumn now. And we were looking at what was in it because we like to look at all the calories per portion that we're eating. And just in oil alone, there is nearly 900 calories in 100 millilitres of oil. And in a carrot cake, there's 350 millilitres of oil. So you are looking at almost four, well, like over three and a half thousand calories just from the oil in that cake, not the sugar, not the flour, not anything else, just solely the oil you're looking at like three and a half to 4,000 calories. And it is crazy. But I'm not saying to get completely obsessed with counting calories. I'm saying to learn what is in what. If you eat pretty much the same thing every day, day in, day out, you'll probably only need to count calories for a week. And then after that, you will 
subconsciously know what is in things you will know how much is in a round of toast how much is in an egg how much is in your morning coffee but then you will also be aware of how many calories are going in and so it's just so much easier to keep an eye on things another thing when i said about like knowing knowledge is power for example if you are somebody i mean i'm very lucky having matt he's like a fountain of knowledge when it comes to like all this stuff but if you were to um the average joe blogs and you were looking on social media and you're saying okay i want to find something healthy for breakfast if i see one more piece of avocado on toast with a poached egg i might just punch myself in the face Number one, I don't like avocado, so that's probably why. But second of all, there is so many calories in that breakfast. Avocado, yes, be it full of good fats, is so high in calories. You're probably looking about 450 calories for that breakfast. Whereas my breakfast that I have is more like 200. But it's still healthy. But if you were to have something you really like, like, I don't know, a bowl of cereal or a bowl of your favourite cereal you'll probably find that there's not much difference in calories um, and there's less, then there might be less fat in it. Like you, you do not know unless you really, really look at what is in things and don't follow like what people may say is good for you because it's not always the case. It's also was really important for me to do things like that because where I say like this whole binge eating thing, I would starve myself all day and then binge at night and think, well, I haven't really eaten anything all day, so I can make up for it at night. But what I wasn't realizing is, say my, say I was wanting to eat 1500 calories a day, I can consume 1500 calories in, in no time. If you eat the wrong things, you can. So yeah, calorie counting, knowing what is in your food, knowing what how many calories you should be eating and making sure you're eating in a deficit is a really, really good way to start eating healthier and eating better. Next little tip when it comes on food is do not give up the things you love. That is one thing again that I've learned from um, starving myself, like from restricting food groups because I think I shouldn't be eating that, like the forbidden foods, biscuits, chocolates, crisps, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you, throughout this journey, I have not given up one thing that I love. The only thing that I haven't really eaten much of is pizza because I've been eating healthier. And so when I eat pizza, my tummy's a bit funny at the moment, like because it's just so, there's just so much in there, like calories and fat and, so when I eat pizza, my stomach's a bit like, oh. But other than that, I haven't stopped eating what I love. But the difference is I've changed them slightly. So for example, if I want a biscuit, I will have one or two and I'll make sure it's within my calories. I won't eat the whole pack. Because before I would eat one or two and then I think, well, I've done it now. I might as well eat the whole pack. That is just self-sabotage. You don't need to eat the whole pack. You could have one or two biscuits every single day. It's not going to make any difference if you tie it in with your calories. But this whole like, oh, I can't eat that. That is where you're restricting yourself. You're making it hard. It's not a lifestyle. It's not ma maintainable. It's just not going to happen. Another thing that I've really, really enjoyed doing is finding things that I love and then putting a healthy spin on things. So I love banoffee pie, for example. If we go to Miller and Carter, I always have a banoffee pie. But when I'm on a night time and I fancy something sweet, I have a vanilla protein yogurt, chop a banana in it, sprinkle a lotus biscuit in it, and sometimes maybe even a little bit of like skinny syrup on top. It is a banoffee pie. It tastes incredible but it's probably about a quarter of the calories. So I'm not restricting what I'm having. I'm just changing it a little bit to fit in with my calories. Somebody asked me, how do I deal with like cravings and appetite and things like that? That is a really difficult one because my appetite again was something I had to work on. So I've tried to do things like reducing my portions a little at a time, but also like I've just said, looking at alternatives that I can have that satisfy that craving but they're not as high in calories so I could eat four of those for one piece of banoffee pie and I wouldn't ever manage four of those I can barely manage one of those like banana and um, banoffee bowls but yet it satisfies my craving so that is the thing it's really actually fun to try and find lower calorie alternatives and think oh what could I have that tastes like that that is better for me 
it's just it's like a game really and i've really enjoyed playing it okay so i feel like i've covered a lot on food and a lot on my feelings on food now i'm going to move on to exercise exercise is a big thing for me because you could actually do really well with just food alone to be honest i mean focusing on your diet is a really good place to start now matt always says to me you know move more try and hit your 10,000 steps on your your um apple watch i've always got my goals set up but sometimes it's just physically impossible if i'm filming and i'm editing i'm sat down all day and it's not physically impossible but i am the queen of excuses so i had to try i have had to try and make an effort to get my steps up a little bit so I again chunked into smaller more achievable goals so instead of just saying say you're averaging five thousand steps a day to go to ten thousand is a big jump so just try and get that extra one thousand a week try and just do a little bit more so i've started to take the dog out on in the morning like that was my thing when they were, we had the lighter mornings i was taking the dog out and getting that extra thousand steps in before seven o'clock even though my steps didn't go up much it was an extra thousand steps a day it was an extra thousand that i was doing before it was me moving more one thing when it comes to like the gym and i like when i say i'm queen of excuses just so many things so many things let me tell you i've used everything i've got bad knees i've got a bad hip i feel like i'm never stopping i am exhausted all the time um but do you know what the funny thing is about it is do you know what will help all those things exercise <laughs> exercise gives you more energy if done right and under guidance you need your bad knees can get better um Matt's got a client who broke his back, right? And even he is back in the gym. He's got a client who's just had a knee replacement. There are a lot of people out there that will have, will then say, well, I've had a knee replacement, or, oh my God, I broke my back. I could never go, never do exercise. There are people there doing it. It can be done. It's not an excuse. It's just that you do not want to go to the gym. That is the problem. And it's not me going, oh, you should be, because I'm that person. I'm that person that has excuses coming out my butthole. It's just overriding those and then thinking back to your why. So with exercise, like I say, I can make so many excuses when it comes to exercise. I don't have the time. I've got kids. I've got work. I've got this. I've got that. I don't feel like it all the time somebody said to me once you will never ever ever regret a workout but you will regret not going and working out and it is so true i've never been to the gym and thought i really regret that like i feel awful but the amount of times i've not gone to the gym because i've made excuses for myself and felt like awful about it is endless so just remember that in the back of your mind that you will never ever ever regret a workout on that though workouts aren't for everybody the gym isn't for everybody i'm very lucky that i love lifting weights it's something that i do actually really really enjoy um sorry if you can hear the cat meowing in the background by the way but my first tip on exercise is find something you love and it won't feel like exercise and then the results will come i can't emphasize this enough being somebody who doesn't exactly in didn't exactly enjoy exercise i had to find something that i loved whether that's finding a local netball team finding a local walking club finding something that you and your friend can do together starting like walking like find a walking club that could do like can go and do hikes and things buying a bike if you like cycling you know doing something that you love i found love in gym classes I love gym classes because there is a time I have to be there. I have to make myself accountable for turning up. And I it really helped me with getting into the gym because going into the gym can be very daunting, especially if you're just going out onto the free weight section. You feel like everyone's looking at you, which they're not, by the way, but you feel like they are. You feel like they're judging you. When what you've got to remember in the back of your mind is all those people started where you are and a lot of them are more looking at you in admiration for getting there than anything else. But there is that thing in your head, that little 
demon on your shoulder thinking I, I'm really embarrassed about being here so gym glasses glasses color gym classes for me were a really easy way into the gym they were like a smooth transition to get rid of that initial gym anxiety um step classes I love as you know I've actually filmed some so they come in um, I'm going to be doing them on my youtube channel to like kind of show you what I started again not for everybody but I love dance and so it's kind of like a dancey exercise routine that I get to do twice a week 45 minutes and it's just something that I love I've found something that I love it doesn't feel like exercise it doesn't feel like torture it doesn't feel like hell on earth I can't taste blood in my mouth like when I get on a treadmill because I couldn't I couldn't think of anything worse than getting on a treadmill like I was unfit people might have said oh you know you weren't that big I was unfit I was unhealthy I was not in a good place and these classes have really turned things around. One thing I will say is just try, I tried spin, love spin, I tried body pump, hated body pump, tried body combat, mm, could take it or leave it, if there was a spin class on I'd prefer to do that, um, didn't like circuits because they're out on the gym floor, um, loved hit training but the times didn't work for me but just keep going to it, like just make it your goal say you want to try gym classes sign up to a gym class different one every week try it if you don't like it what have you lost nothing an hour of your time find something you love you won't feel like exercise and the results will come also when you think of gym classes remember that when you go there there is probably more than likely another person in that room that feels exactly like you so take comfort in that okay so I've spoken about how I found gym classes and how I found something that I loved but say you're somebody who can't go to the gym or you are somebody who doesn't have a lot of time and what I would say to you is be more active in your daily life with things that you don't even think about so for example if you have got stairs or a lift take the stairs if you're on an escalator don't stand on it walk up it if you are going shopping, don't park as close as you can. Park the other side of the car park. If you park on a car park for work, park the furthest space away. Not only do you get your extra steps in, you're less likely to get your door dented. Tasks in the house, say you can't go out the house, you're housebound, say you struggle being more active within the house. Little things like put things away as you go. Instead of piling things on the stairs to take up the stairs, when they need to go up the stairs, take them up the stairs, one at a time come back down next time you need something to go up the stairs take it up the stairs you will probably do 10 extra flights of stairs in a day just by doing that instead of piling one big pile and trying to do some balancing act carrying it up the stairs because that's what i would do because i would be lazy i didn't want to go up the stairs all those times i wanted to try and do le as least journeys as possible so now i make an effort to try and say okay if something needs to go away if it's upstairs if it's in the loft or if it's in the garage if it's in the car I take it there it doesn't matter whether it's 50 extra journeys a day it means that i'm getting my steps in it means i'm being more active in my daily life i'm increasing my neat um which is your daily like activity day-to-day -day exercise a final thing on goals and that is make your goals manageable and what i like to call it is chunking so um what you want to do is you want to make smaller achievable goals so say your goal is weight loss for example say you want to lose two stone don't think of that end goal because that will feel so far away it'll be more demotivating than anything and it will make you just really really feel like it's going to take forever to get there so say you are let's go i don't know 15 stone five make your goal say you want to say you're say you're just over 15 stone and you want to get down to 10 stone if you're 15 stone five say okay i want to get under 15 I want to get under 15 stone that is my goal in the back of my head that is what i want to do five pounds is a lot more achievable than five stone so once you're under your 15 you'll be then like right okay i want to get down to 14 and a half and have that next goal 
doing this makes it so much more achievable it makes it so much more enjoyable and you feel like you're having these small wins throughout your journey it's not so disheartening thinking oh god i've still got four and a half stone to go you're thinking wow i'm under 15 stone i've made it i've achieved something i can't believe i've done that what's next it gives you that little spurt of motivation to keep going as opposed to it just feeling like an impossible task so when I say like about little goals, like it's chunking, say you've got a post box that you go to every day or a news agents that you go, go to every day, time yourself, walk into the news agents and back, put it on a timer, see if you can shave seconds off that journey. So say that it takes you 10 minutes to walk to the post box and back, can you do it in nine and a half minutes the next week? You know, it's little, silly, small little tasks like that that get you to move more. They're measurable goals. It makes it a little bit fun. Those are for people who don't necessarily move a lot. Like Matt has got a client that when he came to him said, all I want to do is be able to tie my own shoelaces. And that really stuck with me. Like there are people out there that do struggle with things like this. So for him to now achieve that goal, is incredible for him it's improved his life being able to do that it's such a small task that not everybody can do but it's like those little goals that are small wins that will keep you motivated and keep you going okay i've spoke loads about what i have done with food and exercise i've spoke about being in a calorie deficit i've spoke about kind of the exercise that i've been doing and i just want to end on four of what i four points that i really want you to take away from this video if anything okay so number one knowledge is power learn what is in your foods learn what is in the food that you eat right now maybe make a food diary of what you're eating and have a look at what calories you're actually eating on a day just really get to know what is in things i'm not saying to become obsessed with calorie counting i'm just saying really really learn what's good what's not so good and and yeah just knowledge is power number two find something you love to do like i say go out there explore maybe ask a friend do something maybe think of something you've always wanted to do and then try and find something locally if you've always wanted to join a gym go and look around a gym you don't have to sign up you could just go and have a look look what classes are on there see if you can find a gym buddy see what they do locally go onto a facebook group maybe there's something local in the area that you can do find something that you love that will help you move more number three make small manageable goals that aren't surrounded by weight the biggest thing with this is you want to distract from the aesthetic and focus on performance that is what i've done i have stopped focusing on the weight loss and started focusing on performance targets deadlift how much can i deadlift how much can i squat can i get a pull up how quickly can i do 50 calories on the air bike how quickly can i do this how far can i get through a step class without sweating you know it's little things like that little small task that i had for myself was how many songs can i get in before i'm hot that hot that i need to take my jumper off that sounds so stupid but when i first started i could never do the warm-up song in a jumper now i'm like through the warm-up routines and i'm still in my jumper i'm still getting warm so that is just like a little thing that i mean like focus on more of the tasks and targets than weight loss targets don't focus on the aesthetics focus on the performance and the final one that i want to end on is listen to your body <laughs> i've really struggled with a lot of things because of my emotional relationship with food but also because of my hormones if you've watched recent videos that i've done i've told you i've been really struggling with my hormones lately it's something i've battled with um and what i have learned is in those weeks where i want to eat chocolate and i want to take it easy on the gym do you know what i do i eat the chocolate and i take it easy on the gym and then on the weeks that I'm feeling good, I completely smash it. I eat more in a calorie deficit because I'm not feeling as hungry. I'm not craving as much. I balance it out. I go to the gym and smash it in those weeks where I really feel strong and I really feel capable. I will take on an extra cardio class that week. I will really push myself out of my comfort zone 
Um, but in the weeks that I'll need to take it easy, I will take it easy. Understanding the process of weight loss is half the battle. And what I will say is the beginning is the hardest. You will have to put the work in. You will find it hard. You will probably struggle with cravings. You will probably struggle with motivation. You will have to put more intensity in. And, and you're not going to be as likely to see the results straight away. Like it was months before I started to notice results. But the more and more consistent you are, the easier it gets. Because as consistency does this, intensity does this. So you won't have to be working as hard. You will find things easier because you are lighter, you are fitter. You are thinking, oh my gosh, I used to actually die through this class. And now you're thinking, that actually wasn't that bad. And the more and more consistent you are, the more you will start to see the re you will reap the rewards and see the results that you want and then that motivates you to keep going when i first started so i started this in everybody's probably going to want to know what i've lost and 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 things like that and whilst i'm not going on the weight scales i will tell you so i started this um journey say march april time start of april um this is me in april um and so it has been just under six months and i have lost i'm one pound off my two stone so i've lost 23 pounds for all, my overall weight loss goal i'm only about five six pounds off now um and that is because i want a christmas buffer don't we all um but like i say the more and more those results will come in the less and less i've focused on the numbers on the scale it's just kind of been like an underlying like we've still weighed we've still taken measurements we've still taken pictures but my main training has focused around performance um so i'm back up to lifting 80k deadlift i mean my best ever was 100 but that was pre-kids um when i was weight training a lot so like my deadlifts are back up at 80 kilos which is i'm really pleased about um and yeah little things like that my journey has been difficult like at the start you don't really see results and you think oh, i'm putting in all this effort and i'm not seeing any results the scales aren't going down i'm tired all the time like it is difficult but just stick with it like please please stick with it because i can't tell you how much happier and healthier i feel and I feel lighter on my feet. I feel happier when I do my videos because I'm not bawling after I've filmed them when I'm editing them back because I hate the way I look. I know this has probably been really rambly and I wish it was just like I do this, 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 this and then lose two stone in six months. But it's not that simple. Um, it is a lifestyle change, not a quick fix. It's an emotional, physical, mental journey and I wanted to do it because I wanted people to be able to relate to it because I'm sure I'm not the only one that has felt this way. Just hope it helps somebody out there find their why, take some pieces from this video and test their own willpower. So yeah, thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm open to answer any questions in the comments below. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I would love for you to subscribe and stick around. And until next time, guys, take care. You said my world's on fire You said